Okay. I just hit record, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start going. Okay. So simplifying radicals is something that you're gonna use if you're moving on to pre-cal. If you're moving, um, I'm not sure if they do it in applied or not, but it is a very very useful tool. If you're going into pre-cal, we use exact values like this quite a bit. So what it is is that we're going to take a big radical and we're going to see if it has a perfect square as a factor. Do you guys know what factors are? Like two numbers that multiply together, right? Four and three are factors of 12. Do you guys remember factor trees from like, I'm not sure when you would have done it. That would break down to two and two. Have you guys ever seen a factor tree like that? Maybe, possibly. Depends on who taught you. Um, I don't use them a ton, but they're really good to see like what number. I call them factor pairs. Like four times three gives me 12. You can break four down and you only stop breaking them down once they're prime numbers. So we're gonna be looking at bigger numbers and we are gonna be looking at do they have a factor pair inside of them? Or triple, depending on what kind of root we have. Um, I'm gonna hop right down to the very first example where we're simplifying 24. So what kind of root do we have here? Square root, cube root, fourth root, what kind of root? Okay, so you have a square root So you're looking for perfect squares. Okay, so I think way back in lesson one, I guess that wasn't way back, that was Monday. In lesson one, you had a list of perfect squares and perfect cubes. You probably want to keep that closer. If you have them memorized, that's good too. So we're going to look at the number 24. We're gonna look at the number 24, and we're gonna see if it has a factor pair that has a perfect square in it. Just needs one. So let's do the factors of 24. What are the factors of 24? Okay, I like it, six and four. I'll give you another one. This is my favorite one to do. One and 24. Anybody else? Yeah, perhaps? Uh, two and 12. Two and 12. And there's one more. What am I missing? Eight and three. Eight and three. Brilliant. All right, so looking at that, is there a set, is there a, factor, is there a factor set that has a perfect square in it? I just need one perfect square. Yes. It's the one Steve gave us right off the top. Six and four. Which one's my perfect square? Four. So that one's my perfect square. So the way we can write root 24 is you always want to lead with the perfect square factor. So root four times root six. This is the exact same thing because we'd multiply the radicands and we'd get root 24. Okay? So we're just looking at it in a different way. Yes, Rahat? How is 6 root a perfect square? Six, square root of 6 isn't a perfect square. Four. The 4 is the perfect square. Oh, okay. That's why my arrow is pointing at the 4. Okay. Can you take the square root of 4, everybody? Yes. What's the square root of four? Two. So if you can square root it, you should square root it. So the square root of four is two. Can I take the square root of six and get a nice number? No. So we're going to leave that as root six. So root 24 is the same thing as two root So those are equivalent forms. Just like one half is equal to three over six, this is root 24 is the same thing as that. And I'm gonna prove it to you because I'm gonna do it in my calculator. 
I'll give you a second to make sure you have that copied down. All right, so I'm going to use my big calculator because it shows me. So if I do the root of 24, I get 4.8989. And if I do 2 times the root of 6, I get the exact same answer. So they are equivalent forms. They just look different. And so what we've just done there is we have simplified a radical. So this is a simplified radical. Now, sometimes I want to preface this. Sometimes you'll have more than one factor pair set that has perfect squares in it. And we'll do an example of that, hopefully. Um, you have to pick the largest perfect square, the set that has the largest perfect square in it. Okay, let's move over to this next one here. Is the pink pen okay? Can you guys see that okay? Coming through? Okay. Um, what kind of root do I have? I have a cube root, so what am I looking for? Perfect, cube. Perfect cubes. Do you guys know what those three dots mean? It means in math, it means therefore. Uh, therefore, we are looking. For perfect cubes. Now that's another list, okay? So on that 4.1, you do have your list of perfect cubes. Um, all right, so we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna do the factors of 24, which we just did. So we had one in 24, uh, two in 12, I'm doing them in order this time, three in eight, and four in six. We just did this for 24, so those don't change but what we're looking for does. In the last example, we were looking for perfect squares. Now we're looking for perfect cubes. So I know you guys probably aren't as familiar with perfect cubes as you are squares, and that's okay. Um, they're on the back board. They're always on the back board in my room. So really what we're looking for is, I'll just write them up here. What's one cubed? Hopefully it's one. What's two cubed? So what's two times two times two? Eight. What's three cubed? 27. Four cubed? Four times four times four? 16 squared? No. 256. What are you talking about? It's still 64. I've done the math. Okay. So, and 5 cubed. 5 cubed. 125. So, remember that 4 cubed means 4 times 4 times 4. It doesn't mean 4 times 3. Okay, so it means 4 times 4 times 4. Exponents just show you repeated multiplication in a tighter format. I'm going to say you should probably memorize those first five. The rest of them you can figure out. Um, so now going back to the example, where's the perfect cube? 3 and 8. So this one, the 8, is my perfect cube. All right, so we always start with the perfect one first. So the cube root of 8 times by the cube root of 3. So what's the cube root of 8? If we go back up to our list, the cube root of 8 is just the base number from this side. So the cube root of 8 is 2. So we can figure out what the cube root of 8 is. That is a 2. But if we did the cube root of 3, that doesn't work. It's not in my list of perfect cubes. So although I might get an irrational number, uh, that's not what I want. I want it like this. 
So this is my simplified radical. And if you're doing this on a quiz or a test and you're not sure if you did it right, all you have to do is go back to your calculator and do oh, uh, math option four, and that's going to be 24. So I want the, sorry guys, you can't see that. Cube root of 24 gives me 2.88. And then what did I say? I said two times the cube root of three. I'm going to hit enter, and I get the exact same answer. So I know I've done it right if those answers are the exact same. All right, so now if we looked at, we cannot simplify to the exponent 4. So if it's a fourth root, what am I looking for? I'm looking for perfect fours. I don't even know, they don't even have a special name. So if we did the list of perfect fours, 1 to the exponent 4 is going to be 1. 2 to the exponent 4 is going to be 16. 3 to the exponent 4 is going to be 81. I'm going to stop there because 81 is greater than 24. Does 24 have a factor that's six, that has 16 in it? No. So we couldn't simplify this. So this one, you can't simplify. And sometimes you'll run into that. You can't simplify that because 1, 16 are not fat. Well, 1 is, but what's the root of 1 is 1, and then it would just be 24, so you can't really, can't really do anything there. 16 isn't a factor, so we can't reduce it. We good? Beautiful. All right, am I good to flip the page? Can you like zoom out on it for a second? Yeah. You want the second? All right. Pop quiz, pop quiz. It's not really a pop quiz. Okay, can root 10 be simplified? It's a yes, no, you have a 50-50 chance. Can root 10? Can root 10 be simplified? I say yes and no, I get it wrong. You would get it wrong for giving me, it's like answering more than one multiple choice. If you give me more than one answer, I mark it wrong. Yes. Okay, first thing I want to do is when I'm doing, like, can this be simplified? I'm going to look at the factors of 10. I got 1 and 10, and I got 2 and 5. What kind of root are we dealing with? We're dealing with a square root, so I'm looking for perfect squares, right? Would you guys agree those are the only factors of 10 right here? Only factors of 10? Yeah. Okay. Any of these, are any of these perfect squares? None. No. So if there's no perfect squares in that list, there's not any perfect squares in that list, we cannot simplify this. So the answer is no, we can't simplify it. Because there's nothing to take the square root of. And although 1 is a perfect square, technically, it's not really going to help us because it's still going to leave us with root 10. So it can't be? Cannot. This cannot be simplified. Okay, let's move over to 27. So awesome that you don't show up on time for my class. Yeah. You have nothing to say, mister, who showed up significantly late. I'm not talking to someone. You were here, I think. Okay. So let's look at 27. First thing I'm going to do to decide if it's simplified is I'm going to list the factors. So I have 1 and 27, and I have 3 and 9. 
What kind of root am I dealing with? I've got a square root, so I'm looking for perfect squares. Is there a perfect square in that set? Yes. Yes, there is. Nine is my perfect square. So yes, it can be simplified. All right, so I want you guys to simplify it. I want you guys to take a minute, and I'd like you to simplify. It really will. We did the factor pairs. We identified the perfect square. You okay? Can I show you guys? Yeah. No, no, please. No. Can you show us, please? We'll give him a few seconds. It's a nice thing to do. I need my vitamins. Okay. Rahat, avert your eyes. Okay, so there's the answer right there. 3 root 3. So we start with the perfect square, because root 9 times root 3 equals root 27. We can take the square root of 9, so we just write it as its number. And we can't take the square root of 3. Well, we can't get a nice number when we take the square root of 3. Okay, so this part, this part is what I was kind of talking about before. So the factors of 200 are all listed there. Okay, so you could break root 200 down many different ways. So the first set that we used was 4 and 50. Because we would get... 2 and 50, but this is not fully simplified. Because you can keep going with this one. What about the square root of 50? What are the factors of 50? 1 and 50, 5 and 10, 2 and 25, right? So you'd have to keep going. You'd have to keep that 2. You'd have to do 25 and 2. So you'd have 2 times 5 times root 2. So 10 root 2. So the danger with not picking the set with the highest perfect square is this isn't fully simplified. This is not, you won't get full marks for doing it this way. You always want to pick the highest perfect square in the set. So the next set that's used is 25 and 8. 25 and 8. So again, everything's great here. That looks great. But what about 8? Can I keep going with that one? What are the factors of 8 that have a perfect square? 2 and 4. So we would have 5 times root 4 times root 2. So that would be 5 times 2 times root 2, 10 root 2. Do you notice we get the same answer? But if you picked the biggest perfect square, which happened to be 100 in this one, you get directly to the answer. So this one is the fully simplified. So I will tell you that if you don't, like if you pick the wrong set of perfect squares, you won't get full marks for that. Did you get your trick done? No. 
Did you have Dairy Queen? You were literally walking the court, okay? Yes. Now, at least I showed up in class like one day. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ben Gally. It won't happen again. <laughs> I hope not. Okay. So moving on, let's hop down to the root 80. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing the factors of 80. What are the factors of 80? I got 1 and 80. I got 2 and 40. Does 3 go into 80? 4 and 20. What else we got? 5 and 16. Okay. 5 and 16. Anything else? Two. No. We did two. We did four. Three. Pardon? I did one in 80. I got that one right off the hop. A five? Oh, we did a five. Oh, we need to do a ten, yeah. Maybe I'll zoom in here. 20 times 20 is not 80. No, 84, yeah. So Steve's given us a 10 and an 8. Anything else? Anything else? 10 and 8, is that it? Okay. Pardon? Got that. 4 and 20. All right. So let's look at our perfect squares in this one. So we know we're looking for perfect squares because what, what kind of root do we have? We got that square root. Square root, so you're going to look for perfect squares. Uh, that's a bad P. Um, okay, I see two. I see one here and I see one there. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Perfect. Are there any more besides the one? Eight. Eight is not a perfect square. It's a perfect cube, though. Yeah. All right. So out of this, I could pick this set no. or I could pick this set. But you have to pick the one with the largest perfect square in it. So we're going to pick that set right there. Uh, so perfect square goes out front. So the root of 16 times by the root of 5. What's the square root of 16? 4. Four. And there, you're done. Simplified. Do we have to go like a multiplication? No, you don't. It's like saying a 3x. It's implied, but if you state it, you wouldn't be wrong either. I will accept both. Okay, let's look at 144. Okay, 12 and 12. So if we're looking at the factors of 144, what am I looking for this time, though? Am I looking for perfect squares or perfect cubes? Cubes. Cubes, because it's a cube root. Wait, there was a perfect cube last time? Eight. Does 8 go into 144? Yeah. Are you sure? 18 and 8. 18 and 8? Thank you. Anything else? 3 and 48. Okay. Very tired of these. Very tired. Now, there's probably lots of factors, would you guys agree, of 144 just because it's a bigger number? And you could list them all. You could go on Google and you could get them all, and that's an awesome strategy, except for when you're on a test and they take your phone and Google away from you. So what I would start doing, and this has helped me when I'm doing really big numbers, is you know your perfect cubes, right? Do you know your perfect cubes? Well, your perfect cubes, one cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed, 27, four cubed. 
No. No. No, four to the sixteen has more equals two. But it's not four to the sixteen. Dude, right now, though, yeah, I don't think you can even understand. Yeah, Steven, you can't spend it. You're supposed to keep your tongue. First thing you can I don't know if I can keep up with Rahat. I don't know if I can keep up with Rahat. Okay, stop, stop. Stop. I don't even know what you're saying anymore. What? Okay, so these are your perfect cubes. So why did I stop at six? Why did I stop at six? It's bigger than 144, right? So I know that anything over 216, I'm not going to use. So in this case where there's lots, what I start doing is I start seeing if the perfect cubes can divide evenly into it. So eight definitely works. Does 27 go into 144? No. Does 64 go into 144? No. Does 125? Yes. No. No, no, no. no, it does not. So the only perfect cube that's going to go in is this one, and we already found that set. So I'm not going to go any further with that. So sometimes when they're really big numbers, all I do is check to see if they're divisible by a perfect cube. Oh no, it's helped me so that you don't spend all this time doing all the factors. It's just a strategy. So we're going to do the cube root of 8 times by the cube root of 18. What's the cube root of 8? 2. And again, ladies and gentlemen, it's really important that that 3 is an index. It's small and it's on top of the little root sign there. This is a coefficient. It's saying two times the cube root of 18. So make sure those cubes, or whatever type of index it is, is small, like you've written it small so I can see it. So kind of the same situation here. We're in perfect... We're looking for perfect fours, exponent four, and we're at 162. So again, a really big number, and we could do all the factors of it, but we don't need all the factors. So one to the exponent four is one, two to the exponent four is 16, Ooh. three, that's supposed to be a three, by the way, 81. 16 times 16? 256. 256. Do I stop here? No. Oh, yeah. I do, because what's my number? 162. So I'm not going to go any further. So perfect exponent 4. Is that, they don't have a special name like cubes or squares. All right, so what factors am I looking for? I'm going to see which one divides evenly into it. What is it? It is 81. Does 16 go into it? 81 plus 81 equals 152. What? I love it. Oh, my God. I'm going to 256. So we have 81 and 2. 16 doesn't go in. And 256 is too big to go in. But 81 does go in. That's the factor set. So if you're wondering how I'm doing that in my calculator, I'm just taking 162, dividing it by 81, and what's left over, the quotient, is my other factor pair. So we put the perfect 4 up front. So the fourth root of 81 times by the fourth root of 2. What's the fourth root of 81? Oh, the three. <laughs> three. You just got to work backwards in the list, right? So it's going to be the base number there. So three and times by the fourth root of two. So that's my simplified radicals. And that's it. That's all. You guys good? Easy peasy.
had like 15 assignments in the school.